like to now introduce Ms. Ishika Arora, who has been interning with Natal's Innovation Forum for the last two months and has been spearheading the initiative to give it this shape. Ishika is an undergraduate economics student at Pomona College in the US. She will be giving us a brief overview of her research project and how it relates to our event today. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ishika, and I am going to be giving you a brief overview of the research project that I conducted while interning with NatHealth's Innovation Forum for the last two months. I request Rupti to please thank you. Next slide. So as we all know, the pandemic highlighted how our system is struggling with access, quality, and keeping that problem state in, statement in mind, the research question behind my project is as follows. Is there potential for collaboration between the healthcare industry and the startup ecosystem to leverage co-innovation co in order to be able to address some of the gaps that we are seeing in our healthcare system? Next slide, please. To help answer this question, I conducted informational interviews of around 15 NAT Health members, including leading hospitals, diagnostic labs, and med tech companies to try and understand what their objectives and expectations from such partnerships would be. I also spoke to some startup incubators to understand the perspective of startups and what they hope to gain from these kind of partnerships. Next slide, please. Moving on to my findings and analysis. Next slide, please. So coming to the industry's expectations from such partnerships, their main aim is to leverage co-innovation in order to address their patients' needs. Now, through my research, four key areas emerged where the industry is looking to collaborate with startups to develop solutions. The first one is remote patient monitoring solutions. And these are basically solutions that could allow you to set up an EICU or maybe Internet of Things uh, devices that allow patients to monitor their health statistics at home, then safely secure those statistics, and then even transmit them to the doctors directly. The second key area that emerged was point of care diagnostics. And again, this reflects the trend of health at home. So point of care diagnostics through cost effective, cost effective devices like smartphones, finger pricks, finger pricks wearables, this was also another key theme. The third theme that emerged was digitization and operational efficiency. Digitization could include digitizing old medical records, digitizing prescriptions in real time, automation of testing uh, related data according to government mandated formats in order to save time, and also digitizing uh, manual work of healthcare workers. So for example, you have nurses who have to take rounds to measure vitals. How can that be digitized in order to reduce the burden on them and in order to, to enable them to serve a larger number of patients. The fourth key theme that emerged was employee training and welfare. If you can see on the charts on the right, the main, the main theme for med tech uh, companies was remote patient monitoring solutions. For hospitals, it was digitization and operational efficiency, basically anything that would allow them to increase the capacity. And for diagnostic labs, it was point of care diagnostic solutions. Next slide, please. Okay, coming to the main criteria by which the industry would like to evaluate its startups and their product. Firstly, credibility. Is there any impact data that has been published on the usefulness of the product? Are there any client references? Then the innovation quotient. Compared to existing products, is the price lower? Is the speed faster? Is the outcome better? Is it allowing you to uh, serve a larger number of uh, patients with the same resources? What is the innovative quotient? Third comes scalability, which is also obviously very important. And one of the key things here is, how convenient is it to integrate the solution into existing systems? And then lastly, sustainability. Industry members are not necessarily looking for solutions that whose relevance depend on temporary patient behavior. So for example, patients' hesitancy to currently come to the hospital to visit doctors, that might not remain after the pandemic. So how do you, keep, how do you create solutions that are sustainable post COVID as well? And lastly, in terms of the industry's expectations, how are they willing to engage with startups? Well, they're willing to partner to develop services, willing to partner to develop products, and a, Interesting example over here is you have an industry member sharing under the right rules and regulations, it's medical data with startups who can help create an artificial intelligence ecosystem that can be used for predictive analysis. Another way the industry is willing to engage with startups is to provide a testing or pilot ground. So you could have a startup that is allowed to test its point of care diagnostics and compare its results with regular testing. And lastly, helping startups through their clinical trial process. Next slide, please. Okay, coming now to the startup side of things and their, their expectations, a quick scan of the startup ecosystem through some secondary research would easily show you that there exists a significant number of startups developing products relevant to the needs of the industry. However, the problem is that only a minute percentage of them actually achieve the growth and scale they need to keep their business sustainable. And hence, we have startups expecting certain benefits 
that they can gain by engaging with the industry. For early stage startups, it is a crow creation opportunity, an opportunity to develop a product customized to the needs of the industry. For late stage startups, it's, it's, it is an opportunity to, de to deploy that product, to, de to deploy it through funding or piloting opportunities. Next slide, please. So as we can see, collaboration between startups and industry members can help startups address their growth dilemmas. It can also help industry members better address their patients' needs through faster and high, higher quality innovation. However, the question arises, why do we not see as many partnerships as we would expect? There are certain barriers to collaboration. Firstly, communication barriers. Many times startups aren't able to have access to or get connect to the top decision makers of healthcare companies or their CEOs. Second, startups also feel hesitant to partner with healthcare companies when they, when they fear that there is an absence of a full-time commitment from the company to promoting and supporting innovation. And lastly, a lack of, of a credible facilitator or a mediator to negotiate the conversation, to overcome the communication barriers, and to also demonstrate commitment for both sides. Next slide, please. Relating this to our event today, how can NatHealth and Time Mumbai help overcome some of these barriers that we discussed? They can create a forum or an interface that leverages their respective strengths and helps us overcome those barriers. NatHealth's key strength is obviously its industry connect. It has 150 members from the healthcare industry, which startups would love to leverage. We also have Time Mumbai, whose strength in building innovation, strength and experience in building open innovation programs for corporates can be used to demonstrate commitment to both sides and facilitate partnerships. Together, this forum can help scan and filter the external startup environment and, and, and filter startups based on the needs of the industry and enable and facilitate partnerships and make them easier. Next slide, please. So in short, the reimagining healthcare industry startup interface series is trying to be that interface that can facilitate the conversation between both sides and make it easier for them to build meaningful partnerships and co-develop products that can help address some of the gaps in our healthcare system. Thank you and over to you, Julia.